So we're sitting here in the what is this the lounge? No, it's the lounge car. The lounge car. See the lounge car? Ooh. Actually, the lounge car is very cool. I took a lot of really wonderful photos here today. But we're sitting here in the lounge car uh, with Robert Degadillo, right? Who uh, we've met here on the train. He's the passenger sitting right behind Casey and me in car 14. That's the car all the way in the back. Known as Coach, maybe once upon a time called Steerage. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, one of the great things about taking the train is we have the opportunity to meet people, talk to people, um, just get to know people we otherwise never would have the opportunity to get to know. So, for all you viewers, uh, here's our new friend, uh, Robert, and uh, we're going to ask him a few questions about who he is, where he's going, why we're on the train together, and. Uh, yeah, let's figure out why he's so interesting. So, Robert, uh, where where are you from, and where are you headed? I'm from Los Angeles. I live in Pasadena, and I'm heading first to Chicago, and then to D.C. and New York and Boston. And what's motivated this trip for you? I've always wanted to take a cross-country train trip, and the stars lined up, and time and money lined up, so I took the plunge. And what about a train trip across America was appealing to you? Something quixotic, romantic, uh, challenging, daring, absurd, very 20th century. So it's a bit of a throwback experience. It is, definitely, considering we're going at 47 miles an hour. <laughs> it's like sailing, nothing's rushed. <laughs> So, um, what are you looking to do in each of the towns that you're, you're heading out to visit? Well, Chicago, I decided to spend the night so I could have a look at the city, take an architectural tour on a boat on the river, and then head to Washington to meet up with my friend Kevin Donovan, and uh, he invited me to uh, share his hotel room, so that was very appealing. I wanted to spend the 4th of July in D.C., so uh, I don't think I'll ever have that opportunity again. So uh, that's, that's actually the longest part of my trip is in D.C. My friend takes off, and then I take over the hotel room for a couple days and enjoy the town and see the sights. And then after that, I'm taking the train to um, New York for three days, where I'm seeing an old friend I haven't seen in 10 years. Just uh, go see the Statue of Liberty. It's become sort of this now, the sort of freedom trail uh, trip, seeing the constitutional monument. So I figured I'd include the Statue of Liberty as well. And uh, after three days in New York and Manhattan, I went to Boston. Uh, I had planned to spend more time in Boston and do the Freedom Trail there and see those sites, but. Uh, my friend Larry, who lives in Boston, outside Boston, uh, suggested we go to Bar Harbor. It's Bar Harbor for you Californians, <laughs> um, which is uh, said to be very beautiful. It once belonged to the Rockefellers, but in their magnanimity, magnanimous gesture, they uh, donated it to the people of the United States, and it's a very beautiful place. On the Cool. So while you've been on the train, I've, you know, obviously we have connected, uh, but I've seen you playing cards with people. I mean, are, are you, you're taking the trip right now on your own. I am. My friend can't, couldn't make it, so I decided to go ahead with it myself. And uh, I've met some really nice people, the, the two of you, and then uh, Manuel, uh, who travels between Barstow and Topeka, Kansas, uh, visiting his family. I was playing cards with earlier, and then another fellow named William, who's on a journey much more elaborate than mine, uh, touring the country as well. So uh, it's very pleasant. It's easy to meet people. People are friendly and open. And I think it slows our pace down and opens us up. And also, the people are much more trusting on the train.
Yeah, because we just have to because we leave our stuff behind yeah, to go eat. <laughs> I actually met uh, two women on the train today here in this lounge car that are from, uh, I think it's Joplin, Missouri, which is the town that was devastated by the tornado. So it's uh, interesting talking to them and hearing their personal experience with that. Their, their sister lives there and they still have family in that town. So it's pretty remarkable hearing that. Eyewitness uh, testimony about about that devastation. Can only imagine. Can only imagine how hard that would be. So, when you get back to civilization, as they say, uh, you're working on the dissertation? I am. I'm uh, pursuing a, a PhD in church history at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena. And uh, I'm writing a dissertation on El Censor, which is an essay periodical published in Spain between 1781 and 1787. There's only been one other dissertation written on the subject in 40 years. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good area for me. There's now some Spanish scholarship and German scholarship uh, on related topics. So it's, it's a good area for me to do research. And your ultimate goal is to... Well, the, with the doctorate, I can do either college or seminary administration, university administration, at a vice president level or director level, you need a, a doctorate. So. so would that be looking at doing that at like a seminary type school? Or a seminary or a college, a Christian college, Christian university, Catholic university, or even a private uh, liberal arts colleges. So, are you Catholic? I am. Yeah. Although Fuller is an evangelical institution. What do you think of the new Pope? He's the last Pope of the 20th century. Uh, he's a very learned man. He's, he's one of the great theologians of the late 20th century. And uh, he's surprised a lot of people, including myself, in some of his positions. He's the Pope. You know, it's, He's not going to make some <laughs> radical, dramatic change. But it should be interesting to see who the next pope is, and whether it's... Uh, he's a German, that was a little bit surprising after a Polish pope. Right. Uh, so it's hard to tell if we're going to have another Italian pope for a while. And we may end up with the third world pope, a Brazilian pope, or a Mexican pope. So, and are you Mexican descent? Or? Uh, my family's from Nicaragua. From Nicaragua? Did they all immigrate to America? Not or? all. My mother did, and uh, <laughs> she brought two of her older children here, oldest, and then I was born here. Cool. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's really a pleasure to hear your story and your journey and with right. this project, and I wish you all the best. Thanks. <laughs> she had what, what, uh, what sparked your interest? First of all, I saw her from a distance. I, I just loved the way she looked, her braids, and her face. She looked like the most authentic person there. And, and, and people were selling like Peruvian stuff and Chinese stuff. And her stuff seemed just more genuine. You know? And so when I went to look at it, I mean, she had those, she had made like little kachuka dolls out of uh, beads and old necklaces and I had seen that necklace that I bought before as I was walking the stage for the bathroom and I really liked the colors because it was turquoise and coral and it just, you know, I thought it was turquoise but you know, it, was, it wasn't at all. So I said, well, maybe I'll come back and see if I can bargain. I didn't know what it was going to cost. But then when she started showing me some of the pieces, and she took a lot of pride in showing me the detail and how much time to take her, how she does it. So I really appreciated that. She, she was so not pushy. Right? She was just so sincere. So I like she had that. a beautiful smile, too. Yeah, she just, just totally opened, you know, just immediately smiled and opened up. 
So, uh, she, and she started telling me about the bracelets, you know, and I know I wish I she started telling me more about the bracelets because she really put a lot of work in those bracelets. It starts off with a piece of copper that's really long, she works the copper, and then she also said that it has her initials on it, A.W., her name is Alberta Wero, and uh, how she designs them. But, you know, I probably should have bought one for myself. So, but then she showed me those earrings too. The, they were sterling and they, they had turquoise and then they had those quick black quills. And they were stunning. They were marked $20. So I just figured I'd get that original necklace. And she said she'd take 20 for it. Really I felt a little bad. And especially she let me take so many pictures of her too. <laughs> And then, you know, then she's like shared a little bit about it, so she's like, well, I'm Navajo, like I didn't know, you know, she says, I'm Navajo, I, I, I'm from the Continental Divide, I'm from the Continental Divide, and she's so, so lovely touch at the end, you know, you were surprised to see all the vendors there at the train station? It was nice, I kind of, you know, I guess they, they're used to people getting off the train and spending some time there. But a lot of this stuff was, you know, kind of, you know, it wasn't really good stuff. But it's fun to look at. But people were buying. It's fun to look. I'm glad she was there. I mean, that's as much as New Mexico I'm going to see. You know? and I figured, you know, this is my one chance. If I'm going to buy something even remotely like the Native American, it's going to be here now. So I'm going to give it to the lady that's taking care of my plants at home while I'm gone. She's from Poland. So I, I know she'll appreciate it. And I'll show her the pictures of it. Of Alberta who made her change. Yeah, I just got dizzy with the train movement. Thanks.